just a second. No? Patricia says, no, you can't. <laughs> Sit back up.
I was I was just a little bit anxious there. That's what that was. Uh, everybody having a good New Year so far? I hope so. Uh, how's everybody going with those New Year's resolutions? Oh me, oh my. You know we make we make resolutions a lot of times at the end of the year that come this this new year I'm gonna start jogging. I'm gonna start eating more fresh fish. I'm gonna stop spreading gossip about Bill, whatever it might be. <laughs> and it's not too long before we get into the new year that we're kind of slipping off that that enthusiasm we had, you know, just a little bit before. And uh, part of it is it's a matter of developing habits, you know, and uh, developing new habits, which involves sometimes releasing or letting go. Letting go of what is comfortable, what you've become accustomed to, so that you can do something new. It might be something that's out of your comfort zone. And uh, there was this guy, he was mountain climbing, and he, he, was, he was on up there a pretty good ways, and he was getting near the summit, and he grabbed hold of a rock, and it gave way, he started plummeting down the side of the hill. And it's not gonna be good, it's a long ways down. And he's reaching, grabbing for anything he can as he's falling. He just luckily grabbed hold of a little tree limb that's growing out of the side of the cliff there. And it's just barely hanging in there. And he's stuck just right there where he's at. He, he can't go anywhere, he's just hanging there. And, uh, He's, he's thinking, what am I going to do now? And then he, he has the idea. He's going to ask for help. And he hollers, help. Is there anybody up there that can help me? Unknown to him, there's another fellow across the valley on another hillside. He's watching the whole thing. He sees what's going on. And he sees there's a ledge just a little way below that guy. He hollers and says, trust me and let go. And the guy thinks about it for a second. And then he hollers, is there anybody else up there that can help me? And that's, that's just how we do. But um, I want to tell you, I got some good news. And that's. God doesn't mark time the way that we do. He is in yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So I'm, what I'm going to tell you is that he loves you. And if you resolved to come to Tabernacle and worship and praise the Lord today, then today is off to a great start. Amen. And it's going to be a wonderful day. Amen. And so. God 
saying, don't believe the part about the, what was that you said? <laughs> We're glad you're here this morning. It's a good day to come and worship the Lord, isn't it? It's a good day to give Him thanks for all that we have, right? <coughs> and, and, they, and God's children said, what? Amen. Well, it's good that He has blessed us to be able to come to a place like this to hear His Word, that we can all sit together and live in peace. Uh, when the pastor's not here today, and there's joy, and they're up in the mountains enjoying those grandchildren, and we're here worshiping the Lord, and they're doing it by way of the internet. So we want to say uh, good morning to everybody that's joining us today, and if you're just visiting here today, we're glad to have you. It's a good day to worship the Lord. It's the day that the Lord has made, because it love endures forever. Yeah. Let us pray. Father, we give thanks to you that we're just able to come here and just say thank you, Lord, and gather at your feet for the things that you've done for us, most of all going to the old rugged cross, dying for our sins, Lord, and making a way for us that we still can say thank you and blessed is the name of Jesus. And today, Lord, we know we're going to have that service today that if there's one here that is lost today, we pray that this be today, that they find their way at your feet, and they look up and their eyes meet yours, and they say yes to you. We ask all this in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Okay. Of Israel. No, 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 I'm trying to, that light is not. Okay, we're going to have a time of fellowship. Is what we're trying to <laughs> hey, here you can fellowship. I want, I want to say this to you this morning. Did you know during the service, at any time that you burdened with anything, did you know Jesus meets you right here? And we'll be fellowshipping here and encourage, being encouraged with somebody today. So let's all stand and have a fellowship time right now. But one another. Thank you. This revival and spreading like a wildfire in my heart.
have church. While well, everybody's get back to the seats, we can have all the kids come this morning to do a kids' offering. While everybody's getting the money out, we're going to teach them how we give back and how they can learn to work. Let us pray. Father, bless these children as they go now and harvest, Lord, the part that they give back. Lord, that you blessed us with in Jesus' name. Amen.
close to your side so heaven is real and death is a lie i want to hear voices angels above singing as one hallelujah
Everybody ready to worship the Lord today? Amen. Amen. We're going to hear His word, and uh, God bringing our sermon today is no stranger to us here. Uh, before I get to him and bring him in here, I'm going to say that uh, the joys in the mountains up there, they got the snowshoe on it. We got a little bit here too on my birthday, is joy. And uh, it's Bri Ann's birthday, and this day was mine too, so you know, we got, didn't get as much snow as they got, but anyway. Uh, we prayed in back here and stay travels to our pastor and enjoy vacation well deserved any time that they can go. But you know, he always leads you in good hands. He leads you in the hands of the Lord, right? We're all his children. We're all here to be obedient to him today. And to make things easy for you so you can understand the Bible and give a good gesture to all the sermons. He uses different people so you don't have to hear the same one all the time. And anyway, we're happy about that today. But anyway, would you make a warm welcome? Brother Cecil's going to come up and give us a word from the Lord today, what he has for you. Would you applaud? If I go, it's going to be that we all leave here more determined forever. To, to worship the Lord and to give Him place in our lives because we got roads ahead of us that are not good for us. But if we just trust in Him, we'll find a way. So if I were to entitle this message, I'd have to call it Determined for Christ because we need to be determined. And I, the reason I would call it that too is because this past Wednesday night, uh, Joy said something about when you be determined. I've already started this message and she come up and tried to steal it from me. So uh, we, we need to be determined that, uh, that we're going to serve the Lord. And we're going to talk about that this morning. Um, the, uh, the other thing is, last Sunday, uh, Joy had, you know, decided they were going to see how great thou art. And this was just before I talked myself out of going to her and saying, I think I need to sing How Great Thou Art. So I sang How Great Thou Art. So uh, give Joy credit for a lot of the outline today as we praise the Lord. To be determined. To be determined means that you're, you've got the gusto and you've got everything yes, you need to keep, keep on pushing on no matter what you face. And I'm going to show you from some scriptures that there are some tough things to face. You think about what the, uh, the disciples did, and you think about what uh, the, the Apostle Paul did. All the things that they did, they were per persecuted. Uh, they were, they were, you know, 11 of the 12 actually died for the cause of Christ. And the only reason John the Beloved didn't die because of the cause of Christ was because God had a plan for him. He had a plan that he was going to put on the Isle of Patmos and he was going to write the book of Revelation. And I'm glad he did. Although I don't understand every little bit in there, I know at the end, I know who the winners are. Amen. Isn't it neat to know that whether you're, uh, whether, no matter what you face in your life, that you're on the winning side before you start? I mean, I feel that way about Carolina when they play basketball. They, 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 uh, they are winners up front, you know? But they don't always come through. But guess what? Guess what? God ain't Carolina. <laughs> and God will always come through. But we might have to face some things. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Well, I want to talk about my dad and how determined he was with one situation. When we were little kids, um, there came a great flood. I don't remember where it all came from. But anyway, it came a great flood. And mom put me and my brother and my sister on top of the roof of the house. You can already tell that there's, there's, uh, uh, this is really didn't happen, but well, for our sake this morning, it happened, right? She took us on top of the roof of the house, and we sat up there, and my daddy's hat was floating in the front door, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And uh, I, said, I said, Mama, how come daddy's hat's out there floating back and forth? She said, well, your daddy said, come hell or high water, he was going to cut the grass today. <laughs> so, he, so he was cutting the grass, whatever it may be. So what I'm trying to say is my daddy was determined. In Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, 
one of my favorite portions of scripture. And I'm going to show you how that, that uh, ties into the book of Romans. We've been studying the book of Romans in Bill's class, but I, I want to say a few things about that before we get too far into it. Um, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to stand before uh, these folks today and bring bring your word, the word delivered to to me because I asked the Holy Spirit to do so. Father, I ask right now that you would put me out of the way and that you would replace me with the Holy Spirit. Let every word that's spoken here be spoken by the Holy Spirit through me so that you will be glorified and you would be honored and will praise you for everything that you do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Uh, have we really learned to trust him with all our heart? With all thine heart. Have we really learned to trust him that way? If we want to get determined to go through some things that are just ahead of us, then maybe we maybe we need to group and regroup about how we deal with the relationships we have in this church because I believe TBC is the place to be. In this time of trouble, I believe TBC is the place to be because we're going to turn everything over to God. I'd like to think that by the end of this message that you see the importance of joining hands and, and joining hearts and be determined. That means you're going to have to do some things that aren't, aren't real, real uh, easy to do sometimes. You know, stuff, stuff like loving your enemy and that kind of thing. But do we, who do we trust? Uh, do we trust in him or do we place our trust in a person? Do I place all, 100% my, God's asking us to place all of our trust in him. But can I do that with any individual? Am I able to do it even with my wife? Can I have a complete 100% trust in her? Let me tell you something. If we disagree on something, it means I don't have trust in her because if I had 100% trust in her, then everything she said would be true in my heart. It ain't that way. Sometimes she gets mad and she fusses at me. And she don't like it because I don't fuss back a whole lot. I just sit there and look and she look fussing too. But that tells me that we don't always agree on things. Uh, and, and what about what about those that have authority over you? Do you trust in them with all your heart? You can't even do that. The ones that have authority over us, like our boss, I'll tell you what, I'll bet your boss has more interest in the bottom line than he does in, in keeping you employed. Mm -hmm. The time comes around to where COVID has said it's new to shut down, you can't have more than 10 people working for you, then there's a time coming where you might get laid off. I don't think I trust somebody that's going to lay me off. What about, what about, uh, what about your parents? Can you trust your parents 100% of the time? I don't think so. I know my parents made mistakes, and the reason I know my parents made mistakes is I've made mistakes just like that. I just followed in their footsteps, and I've made mistakes like that. So trust in the Lord with all thine heart. I'm having a hard problem with the time with this. What about our pastor? I've known our pastor longer than anybody else in the church has. Uh, it doesn't make, well, I think Ms. Ellen probably known him as long as I have because he came to the church after both of us did. But anyway, I've known him since I was 15 years old. And I can tell you this right now, and he's listening to this right now. I can tell you this right now. I trust my pastor to the extent, the entire extent, that I would die for him. I would. I trust him that much. But is that 100% trust? Am I trusting him 100% like I should be trusting God? No, I don't think so. Uh, he, he uh, I tell you what, I'm going to say this, and we're going to hear this joyous voice ringing through the state. He makes mistakes every once in a while. Joy probably sees it more than we do. But if you ever have a situation where you need to trust someone, 
Your pastor is someone that you need to be able to put uh, put complete trust in, but not 100%. You can't do that because he's a human being just like you. How about uh, how about do we trust our government with all our heart? <laughs> Funny we should come up on that one. Do we trust our government with, with all our heart? Why do you should even ask that? <laughs> because because uh, it helps me go into some other things I'm going to take. You cannot trust your government to be what you need it to be. You can't trust your government. When, when the government says a man can go to the White House and, let me see, I want the, the suits to come in and take me away this morning. Um, and they have specific ideas about what is right and what is wrong. That was pretty clean, wasn't it? Without going into detail. They have a problem with understanding what's right and what's wrong, and we have to stand up and make a stand in this world to say that's not according to God's will. So no, you can't trust your government. You can't trust your government. You can't trust them with all your heart. Do we uh, do we trust ourselves? I, was, I got to that one and I said, hmm. I can't even trust myself 100% of the time. If I could trust myself 100% of the time, I wouldn't have been eaten up by the Holy Spirit when I prepared this message. Because every little thing I had put together, God said, well, let me preach it to you a little bit first. <laughs> and that's what he did. He preached it to me a little bit first. I was going to let you read the, uh, the outline last night, Shannon, but uh, I was afraid that you'd see some stuff in there and tell me, <laughs> tell me some things and God will use her to preach to me some more and more words. <laughs> and I wasn't ready for that. So, um, so I can't even trust myself. I can't trust myself to take my medications when I'm supposed to. I can't trust myself to get up when I'm supposed to. I can't trust myself 100% of the time. Now, I should be able to trust myself Right, right behind God. There's God, there's trust in Him, and in Cecil, there's trust in Him. No, no. Please don't put trust in Cecil. Put trust in the Holy Spirit that I hope works in your heart today to make you the kind of person that's going to be determined to love your neighbor, to love your enemy, to, to uh, witness to your neighbor, witness to your enemy, do all those things that you know that God wants you to do, and do it with, with do it with fervor. Don't just don't just go out there and, and, and uh, read the Bible to them or pray with them and, and not really get send a message to them. We've got some things that need to happen, and I believe that those things will happen for Tabernacle if we jointly come together and say, "I'm determined to follow Christ in everything. I'm determined." that no matter what happens in the leadership of this government, that I'm going to follow God, and I'm, going to not, I'm not going to be following God all alone. I'm going to be following God with, with Eddie and Mark, and I'm going to be following with, with Miss Ellen and, and Miss Dot. I'm even going to be following with Mr. Don. I'm going to be following, we're going to join together. We're going to join together as a church Think about that. Think how powerful we could be in this community if every one of us had the same thought in mind. Here's the thought in mind. Trust the Lord with all thine heart. Amen. Wow. Isn't it neat that we got somebody we can actually do that with? Yes. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Okay, Lord, I'm ready to trust you with all my heart. So, trust in the Lord with all my heart. Are you ready to be determined to trust the Lord with all your heart? Are you really ready for that? That's going to take some kind of commitment. A commitment that we all need to make to Christ and should have probably already made before. I need some water if I can get some food. <coughs> then, um, trust the Lord with all your heart. Then lean not into your own understanding. Seek God's wisdom. Do we lean on God's word enough? 
How many of you can honestly say that you give 2.4 hours of your time during the day to God? Where did I get that from? I get that from preaching that I've heard from the man that pastors this church a long time ago. 10% of your talent, 10% of your time, and 10% of your money. 10% of everything. That 10% of your time, how much time do you spend in God's Word? And I mean truly spend in God's Word. Did you know one chapter out of the Bible read and studied fervently is better than reading 10 chapters and do it casually? You know what I mean? We need, to be, we need to be seeking God in His Word. We need to be trusting Him, and we need to lean on Him because we don't need to lean on our own understanding. If we lean on our own understanding, I would, uh, I'd be blessing people out every day, I think. But uh, the, the chances are that uh, leaning, on, leaning on myself, I'm going to fail. I'm just trying to get a message across that tells you you trust in the Lord and you lean not to your own understanding but lean on God. I like that. I really like that. Lean on God. Do we lean on God or do we lean on what our pastor says? Most of the time, you can believe that we can lean on what our pastor says. And I can tell you why. Because our pastor, before he ever stands in this pulpit, he does the same thing I've been doing uh, ever since I got up this morning and as I was in church today, um, he's, he's been offering himself up to, uh, to be used by the Holy Spirit. He, he asks before he does any message, he asks that we, that, uh, thank you. He asks that we, uh, that the Holy Spirit would fill him. And that's what I asked for the Lord to do this morning. Holy Spirit, fill me. And I'm not as young as I used to be, but if I was young again, like at 25 or 30, maybe even 40, I'm not going to say 50 because that's still young to me, but still, <laughs> if I was 30 or 35, I would say that I would run around this church. I've done that before. I was up here preaching one night, and this, uh, this girl came in, and she was in a wheelchair. And they sat back there where Kim is sitting right now. And she sat on the aisle, uh, out in the aisle in her wheelchair. And I got a fit on me. The Holy Spirit filled me. And I wasn't ready to just rear back and let her go. And I ran all the way to the back of the church. And that girl, when I got close to her, I said, <laughs> And so I had to apologize for her. But what I'm saying is, the smuggles get them run, that's fine. <laughs> but but so what I'm saying is let the Holy Spirit work through you because if you let the Holy Spirit work through you, then you can be determined to lean on our Savior, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, do we learn to, do we lean on our understanding of what the Word says as we casually read it? Are you ready to be determined to have God speak to you from his word? He'll do that. He'll do that. You go into his word and study it, he'll speak to you. As a matter of fact, he'll speak to you a lot. If you continue in the same frame of mind throughout your day that you came you started with. So we trust in the Lord with all our heart, and we lean not into our own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. How many of you acknowledge God in all your ways? Do you acknowledge God for the most important thing in your life? What did God give you that was, is right now the most important thing in your life? This should be salvation. That should be the answer on everyone's heart. If it's not, we want to change that today before you leave. But if... if uh, What's beyond that? What is that physical thing that God's given you that's so important to you that you would acknowledge God for forgiving you? You husbands should be thinking my wife. You wives should be thinking my husband. But um, the wives should also be thinking of the, of the children, and so should the husband. But 
We need to acknowledge God for what he's done for us. We trust in him. We lean not into our own understanding and we acknowledge him for who he is. Are you ready to be determined to acknowledge him? Um, we need to acknowledge him for even the smallest things. God, help me even with the smallest things. I ask you to try this. I mean, if it don't work for you, that's fine. Just as soon as your eyes pop open, reach for your Bible. Don't try to read a whole, whole book. Just read a little bit and pray. And then get up. And if you haven't already done it the night before like I did last night, ask God, what, what do you want me to wear today? What do you want me to wear today? And then go to your closet and say, oh, okay, yeah, I'll go along with that. What do you want me to eat for breakfast today? Or do I have to eat breakfast? I'm not much of a breakfast person. Um, what about the little things? If you can learn to acknowledge God in the little things, it becomes easier to acknowledge God in the big things. Right. When the people out there see what people in Tabernacle Baptist Church do, with all the stuff that's coming along, that's, I can say stuff, stuff that's coming along, when they look at us, what are they going to see? Are they going to see people that are, that are, that are cower, cowering away because they wear a mask if they're around people? I see people wear a mask driving down the road in their car, and I'm like, why? I see people walking along the side of the road. Um, why? I mean, are, are we cowering away from the things that people seem to be pushing on us, pushing forward on us? If we are, we're not acknowledging exactly what Christ can do for us. Christ can fill us with such a love. So what are the big things? The big things are what we have to face. The big things are in, in, in acknowledging Him or the, the way we work as a unit. And, and I'd like to think the tabernacle can work as a unit. But I, I want you to consider some things. And forgive me if I, if I throw somebody off of this song I used to love to sing. Consider the lilies they don't toil or spin but there's not a king with more splendor than them. Consider the sparrows, they don't plant or sow, but they're fed by the master who watches them grow. If he has that kind of love for them, really, that kind of love for a sparrow, they are that important to him, those are small things to him, then you can believe he has concern about the government. But let me tell you something. I'm probably getting ahead of myself, but that's okay. Um, let, let me tell you something. He's concerned with what happens with us through all the stuff that we have to go through. Let me remind you of some things that you probably already know. In the book of uh, in the book of Romans, and incidentally, the book of Romans in my mind has always been since I was a young fellow. The book of Romans is the pinnacle of the Bible to me because of the uh, because of the things that God gives us and we see in the book of Romans. And then Romans chapter eight, some of you may have heard me say this before. In Romans chapter eight is a is the peak of that of that pinnacle. Romans chapter eight, when he says certain things about uh, about how we handle things in our current situation, you know, God created things in six days. Now I just want you to consider something here. Don't just consider those little lilies and those sparrows. God created the entire universe 
and all the universes beyond that. God created all the inhabitants of this little place we call Earth. Okay? In the rest of the Bible, after he created all this stuff, he created animals of man. So he created man, and once he created man, guess what happened? The rest of all his word, from Genesis to Revelations, was centered on one centerpiece, and that centerpiece was man. Imagine that. A God that created all this other stuff, created man, and he was the center. You know how I know? Because when he created him, he also created the way of redemption. The way of redemption for you and for me and for every other person that's got saved and will get saved. So consider this. We are the centerpiece of his creation. Have you ever gone out at night on a clear night and looked up in the stars and you see that shining one up there and you think, that must be the North Star, you know, it's Saturn. Just so you know. But anyway, you see all those stars, the mighty stars in the skies. You see planets and stars all over the universe. And then you think, then there's millions of other universes out there. And God created all that too, right? But he created man, and man became the most important thing in all of creation. Man became the one that God would come and, redeem, and give his life to redeem us from our sins. Think about that in just a second. Consider this. If God did that, then he should be talking a whole lot about stars and stuff, right? Well, you find if you look in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 16, the last five words. Yeah, he made stars also. Mm -hmm. But that seemed him a little bit. You saw all those stars on a clear night. Millions and millions of universes. All this stuff up in the sky. And the Bible says, he made the stars also. But when he made man, he made his perfect, perfect plan for redemption. And that's what we get from him. There are three commands and one promise here. The commands are trust in the Lord with all your heart. Okay? And lean not into your own understanding of the command. And in all your ways acknowledge him, no matter how small the thing is or how big the thing is, in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. Are you ready to be determined to be the one that acknowledges Christ? Are you determined to be the one that trusts in him with all your heart? Are you determined to be the one that that, uh, that you lean on no matter what? Are you determined to let to, to acknowledge him and what he is in your life, then we can move on and, and, and uh, see some other things. Some of those paths that you walk down, so his promise was, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Did you know that everything you do, if you include the Holy Spirit and you pray like you're supposed to and you get into his word and you're determined to serve and love him above all others, <coughs> did you know that it makes it easy for you to go through things with Christ? Or with, with Christ leading you? Did, did, the, uh, hang on a second. I didn't back my notes. I forgot what I was going to do this. I didn't skip half of what I was going to do. Okay, you, you're on the lane side. Some of those paths that you have to take might not be so easy to take. One that was very difficult for me one time was I preached the funeral of a man that I know was unsaved. That was a path that I choose not to go through, but I did. Maybe you're shy. 
and a path for you to go then and trust the Lord in is to witness to a person, but you're too shy. Maybe, maybe there's one of a million other things, I don't know, that you just can't do without suffering in some way or another. And think about this. God wants you to pray for pray and love your enemy. So that in Sunday school this morning. God wants you to pray and love your enemy. And we find that hard to do sometimes. Maybe you know somebody some you know somebody that's done something really horrible and you can't forgive them. And it's hard to love and pray for that enemy. God expects us to do Think about this as we close. Think about this. Paul, the apostle, he, he was tortured. He was in prison. He died for the cause of Christ. The disciples, just like I mentioned before, they all died for the cause of Christ except for John the Beloved. In Romans 8.28, I'm going to give you some marching orders. I talked about being determined for different things. I'm going to give you some marching orders because we need them. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are to call according to his purpose. All things work together for good to them that love God. This is a, this is a man that has been tortured. This is a man who's been thrown in prison. This is a man that died for the cause of Christ, but he says, and we know all things work together for good to them that love God. And I know the Apostle Paul loved God. I can tell by the preaching that he did in Corinthians and, and uh, in Romans and, and every other epistle he wrote. I think I don't even remember how many of them. Do you love God this morning? All things work together for good to them that love God. Are things not working out so good for you? Do you really love God? Or do, do you place love for a human being over the love for God? Do you really, truly love God? That's something only you can search out in your heart. Do you really love God? If so, to them who are calling to His purpose, all things will work together. I'm, I'm encouraged by that. But I don't know if I'm so encouraged about the man who said it, you know? No, really, I, 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 Paul knew what he was talking about. He knew that even through suffering, even through pain, even through death, that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called for into his purpose. It brings me to mind of a young lady that served in this church for a lot of years that I had a hard time when she decided it was time for her to go home to heaven. When, when, when Sharon died in that car accident, I don't know, I, I don't know how to get over that, except to trust in the Lord. But, but I don't know how to overcome the feeling that comes to me when I think about it. But she had hard, hard problems or whatever. She had things that weren't going right in her life or whatever. I don't know. But what I do know, she could have had a hunky-dory life here. But I do know that all things have worked together for her good. That's why Paul could say it. Because he knew even in death that all things would work together for good for him because he loved God and was called according to his purpose. That's what we have to do. We have to love God so that when we're on the other side, I'm telling you, once I go through that pearly gates and fly right by my daddy and say, I'll be right back, daddy. And I'm going to go straight to my baby and I'm going to say, how's it been up here, girl? And she'll say, Jesus, Jesus. How many of you remember how she just fell out there? Woo! Don't let this turn you on. Don't let us just turn you on for Jesus. 
All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, and the reason it happens is because God's in control of that life. In Romans 8, verses uh, 35 through 39. Things don't sound too good here for, for, uh, for the apostle here. But it ends in a way that I think is incredible. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Get enough of that. Shall distress or persecution or famine or nakedness? I hope not. Or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Whoa, Paul, hold on a second. I don't want it to be that way. I don't want to be like a sheep taken down for slaughter. And you say, well, then Paul says, nah. But it's really nay. That's what he said, nay. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. Remember what I told you earlier? How about how we've already won the battle, already won the war? It's already been decided in the last book, the last verse of the Revelation, that we have won the war. But what happens in a war? Does everybody live through a war? Or do both sides probably lose somebody? On our side, we have Christ, and we love him, and all things are going to work together for our good. So we praise him for that, and we come out looking real good on the other side in heaven. Nay, and take that back one more time. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. To be more than a conqueror, what, what can be more than a conqueror in a, in a war? I'll tell you what can be more than a conqueror here in the, uh, during the war. We're going we're gonna to reign with him. We're going to be in charge of this thing as we win this war against Satan once and for all, finally. Okay. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, that's a little spooky thing, principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our, our Lord. You see what I call Romans chapter 8, the, pen, the people on top of the pinnacle of the Bible, because all that could be thought of was thought of. And we come out smelling real good because it's, we don't get separated because of these things from the love of Jesus Christ. We don't get separated because of that. Now, I want you to consider something. We have a unique year sitting before us. I don't know when Christ is coming back, but I feel like, hey, the rapture could happen any minute, and it really could. And of course, for those who are not prepared, it means you're going to live, you're going to stay here through some pretty, pretty awful times. And if you die, what happens if you don't know Christ? Maybe we don't say it enough. You're going to hell. Hell is a real and burning place, and it exists for Satan and his demons, not for us. But we, we, we would go there if we didn't accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. So, are you ready to get a hold of, of uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6? Are you ready to get a hold of that? Can you say, I trust in the Lord 100%? Can you say that? Can you say that and, and really mean it? Can, can you back it up with what you're doing? Can you back it up with what you give back to Him? Can you back it up with serving Him? If you've got a talent, give it to Him. If you've got a treasure, and I'm very, it's a great treasure, Lord, yes. Uh, if you have 
great treasure, any kind of treasure, give it, give, give it all to him. You know, people, people worry about 10% tithe, you know, when in fact God owns 100% of it uh, anyway, you know. He gave it to you, you just give it a little bit back to him. But are you ready to be, to lean on him through everything? Are you ready to acknowledge him in every little thing that comes along, in every big thing that comes along? Trust, lean, and acknowledge. Now, I talk to the church as a whole. We need to join together, I believe, in a commitment to be the lighthouse in this community that will shine the light of Christ to a lost and dying world. We need to be that way as a, as a group of people. I ask you today, are you committed to doing those things? Are you committed to be determined, like my daddy was a cutting grass, be determined to do something for Jesus Christ? Yes is the answer to all those, I'm sure, but you got to count the cost, too. The cost could be death for us, could be pain, persecution, same kind of things that Paul and the disciples went through. We might see those kind of, seek them out of those kind of things. Who knows? We might see a civil war. We don't know what's going to happen. But anyway, every head bowed and every eye closed. I said a lot of things in the message today that surrounds what Christians ought to be doing to put God first and be determined to serve, serve Him no matter what. So it has been surrounded around Christians. But I, I, want, to, I want to try to get a uh, feel for what we're doing right here. If, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior, and you know that uh, you, you've got that home prepared, work prepared for you in heaven. If you know that without a shadow of a doubt, please raise your hand and let me know. Okay, thank you. Uh, for those of you who couldn't raise your hand, you don't know what you're missing out on. Being a child of God is very is, is a very rewarding thing, no matter what you go through. Because God is your friend and the love. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you never, if you never ask Him for forgiveness and never ask Him into your heart, if you've never, if you've never uh, been saved, I want to pray for you. And if I pray, when I pray for you, I'm praying for your salvation. Is there someone like that here today that doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior? Would you raise your hand and I'll pray for you? Anybody at all? Okay. It's all standing.
Father, that we would acknowledge you as the God you are, one that is worthy of our praise. Lord, you, Lord, I pray that you would become the center of our lives as, a, as individuals and as a group. And Lord, you bless us. And Father, I pray for, uh, for us to say, I want to be eternal, Lord. I pray, Lord, that uh, folks would come and say that at this altar today, and for that one that might be lost, and be encouraged to walk out and come forward, and we'll meet them at the front and and uh, show them how to be saved. Please, we ask it in Jesus' holy name.